When you feel disappointed in yourself, you can use those feelings as markers and pointers to show you what it is that you actually care about. And you can also get excited about the fact that you have an opportunity to go up from here, to rise above it, and to be proud of the growth. But you can also acknowledge that perhaps it just wasn't in your best interest for things to work out the way you think you wanted them to. But above all, you don't have to have a good reason for why you feel disappointed sometimes. Life just doesn't meet your expectations and maybe that's a good opportunity to go deeper within, to rest and retreat, figure out what it is that you're expecting from your life and how you can meet those expectations in a way that's healthy, realistic, and bringing you joy. Hello, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Wellness Wave podcast. My name is Sarah. If you are new here, and if you are not new here, I hope that you feel right at home. Grab yourself that grounding beverage. Right now, I am drinking Paris Tea by Harney and Sons. This has just the most aromatic, mm, it's got like a sweetness to it. It's a black tea, perfect for this rainy fall morning because it is officially fall. We are there, ladies and gentlemen. And slowly but surely, it is getting cooler and more pleasant outside. I actually just finished redoing my porch area, which is so exciting because now I finally have a place to enjoy the outdoors in privacy. I've been sitting out there in the mornings with the cats, reading, getting some work done, just having a cup of whatever it is that I'm drinking and enjoying the trees behind my apartment complex. It's been a minute since I've gotten behind the camera. I've been going through a lot of shifts in my life these past few weeks slash months. To be honest with you guys, I've just been having a lot of mopey days, mopey mornings. A lot of transitions and uncertainty have been coming up which tends to happen for me this time of year. I feel like a lot of you can relate to this, where I will spend my summer going on these adventures, traveling. It's my birthday in August, as you may already know if you've watched my past couple of episodes where I talk about the transition into the latter half of my 20s because I'm 25 now and honestly, it feels good. I love this age. But after that high of the summer, there tends to be a little crash, a little come down, if you will. Also, the earth is starting to go into that hibernation period. You know, there it's still green outside, but the leaves are starting to turn. It's just this like waiting period of like, oh, death is coming, change is coming, the cold, the dreary. But I also get really into the fall aesthetic. I tend to get a little bit grungier, if you can't tell from my makeup. I'm loving the decor going on in my apartment right now. I've got it all cozied up in here. That being said, I've had many depresso moments over the past couple of weeks. And as a result of slash because of this depression episode that is coming and going, I haven't been taking the best care of myself, haven't been eating as well, haven't been exercising as much. It's just been a weird couple of weeks. I've been partying and going out a lot more. I went to Music Midtown um, with an artist, so I got like backstage passes a couple weeks ago with my friend um, Ashlyn, who is Ash Tuesday. Go check her music out; she's amazing. All of these outings and adventures have been super fun, of course. And I'm not saying that you should never party or let loose a little bit. That being said, I know that when I'm going out really consistently, I'm losing sleep. I'm not eating as well because maybe I'm getting food out with my friends late at night. I'm probably drinking too much coffee to make up for it the next day. I might be engaging in other mood altering substances. Hey, shh. I might be engaging in other mood altering substances, certain plant medicines, but you didn't hear it from me. I've just been in a little bit of a grungy party girl era. I've been going through some career changes. As you know, I quit one of my jobs. I don't talk about the many faces of my work on here, but I do have several projects going. I do some marketing, event planning. I am assistant manager at a coffee shop. I just got that promotion. I had additionally interviewed for a nine to five more corporate type of job here and had been waiting on hearing back from that. It didn't work out, honestly, 
for the best, for the best. I think it would have been really fun and I would have learned a lot, but I also just think I'm at a point in my life where I'm really enjoying the flexibility and freedom that I have in my schedule. I love being able to pick up a new project whenever I want. (laughs) I love being able to travel whenever I want, make my own schedule, you get the idea. So there's a lot happening, there's a lot going on. So I've had a lot going on. My social life has been great. Job slash career wise, things have been shifting. I haven't been focusing as much on my podcast and my social media presence, honestly, because I've just not wanted to be on a screen all day. I've been feeling really tired of like being on my phone and texting all the time. And I just haven't been feeling myself. Like I haven't wanted to be on camera, but I've decided that I'm going to be disciplined. I'm gonna get on camera today, talk about a little thing called self-disappointment. I polled you guys on Instagram a couple of weeks ago with a couple of heavy topics, which would you like to hear about? So I think my, my audience knows that I've been going, <laughs> going through it recently, but everybody seemed most interested in this. Um, understandably so, because I think that this was the one I was most interested in sharing about and exploring. So I've spent the past couple of weeks diving into those feelings of like, I feel disappointed because my life is not where I thought it would be right now, but I need to take a step back and look at the expectations I initially had for myself and see how my life now is meeting those expectations in the sense that, like I said, my social life is really good. I'm connecting with people in my community in person rather than focusing so much on the digital side of things. Sure, my habits may not be the most consistent and the most routine right now, but I've been resting a lot. I've been watching Gilmore Girls and getting into my cozy, restful fall era. I'm revisiting slash exploring some makeup looks and clothing styles, like this soft grunge biker girl thing I've been feeling the past couple of days. I'm not one to promote the romantic- romanticization? Romantic- I'm not one to promote romanticizing depression or mental health challenges in any way, but sometimes that's how you get through it. For me personally, that's that's how I do it. I have to like put on the Elliott Smith album and put really dark makeup on, drink a, a cup of coffee in the cemetery in order to be like this discomfort has meaning and beauty to it. And it's teaching me lessons that maybe I can't see clearly right now, but when I am a few weeks or months or years, however long it takes, into the future, I'll be able to look back and say, wow, the universe, God, my higher self, was teaching me something there. Disappointment is an uncomfortable feeling, whether you're feeling it towards somebody else whether somebody else is feeling it towards you, especially when somebody else is feeling it towards you, but even more so when you're feeling that towards yourself. It's this feeling of being trapped and stuck and having no control over the outcome. Maybe you just have really harsh expectations for yourself and this was a chance to unpack some of those perfectionist tendencies. Maybe we set a deadline for ourselves and failed to meet it. Take a look at that deadline. Was that realistic for you to set it that close in? What was preventing you from accomplishing your goals? Don't dwell on this too much because ultimately the more time we spend stuck in the past, That's occupying energy that we could be using to take action now and take steps forward into a a better version of ourselves. We are stepping into the final quarter, Q4 of 2023, which is pretty crazy to think about, but I bet you that there are some New Year's resolutions that you have not quite checked off your list yet, and that's okay. There's still time, but also maybe it's time to look at those resolutions and reevaluate is that what you really want still and is there something wrong if you decide it's not what you want still because i think shifting your priorities and your goals your vision is natural to do as we grow and change through life 
I'm not saying you shouldn't stay committed to the goal and to the vision. I'm saying you should look at your circumstances and how they have changed over time and see how that vision or goal fits in now. And if it doesn't fit in at all, then something needs to give, something needs to change. And here's that opportunity to to really settle into what that is. A lot of us will get into good habits or routines, we'll establish these patterns that help us feel resonant and vibrant, but we forget that the old patterns and routines that we had left an imprint on our being because we were trapped in them for so long, that it's gonna be really easy to slip back into those behaviors and coping mechanisms when we're feeling unsafe and insecure. We latch on to things that feel temporarily better because we feel insecure and we want that stability. But a lot of times the stability is a totally false illusion. There may be habits you have that feel really uncomfortable for you, but are actually helping you in some ways. For me, sometimes writing music is that way. I'll go into some really dark thoughts and dark places when I write, and I've discovered over these past couple of months that that is a form of shadow work for me. It allows me to look at the parts of myself that I'm a bit ashamed of, but sometimes going into that place results in me embodying that version of myself a little bit too strongly and then I can get stuck there. And that's where, you know, we've got to find these the balance, letting ourselves indulge a little bit in behaviors that maybe don't feel so good, but not staying there for too long. Addictive behaviors and tendencies ultimately are our attempt to escape from uncomfortable feelings but we don't always need to escape the uncomfortable feelings. I think when we avoid the parts of ourselves that we don't like, we start to either obsess over it or it becomes so needy for our attention that it's jumping out like, hey, look at me, I'm right here. Um, You know, take care of me, take care of me, I need help. But on the other hand of the spectrum, if we attach ourselves to those qualities and become kind of addicted to our sadness and our, our, you know, I was talking about this with a couple people yesterday about how we have these addictive feelings such as anger and sadness and um, any kind of like excitement, any kind of stressor to the nervous system can be addictive because we want to feel that high again, that the adrenaline rush of it, you know? And so sometimes we avoid things that are healthy for us because they're not exciting. They don't do it for our nervous system. They're too they're too calming and relaxing and we don't want calm and relaxing. We want the the rock and roll and the terror, the excitement, the bad behavior, you know, sneaky sneakiness, like those kinds of fun Halloween spooky feelings. Like that's that's what I'm kind of trying to get at. It's like walking into a haunted house but it's also a fun house. And every single time something jumps out at you or you see yourself in a mirror a certain way, it's like a little hit of neurotransmitters, you know what I mean? That actually makes me think about the dopamine detox, which I'm sure you've heard of. I've been considering doing one myself at some point. I just don't know if I'm quite there yet, not quite ready. We also need to be really mindful of who we're surrounding ourselves with because a lot of times it can be easy to latch on to people who share your bad, coping mechanisms and dependencies and feed off of each other and be like oh because they're doing it it's okay that I do it as well and you know we can just all be happy and ignorant naive to the reality of our situation together (laughs) and I also I just want to clarify once again like you can hang out with people and engage in bad behavior with them but it's all about moderation it's all about knowing the limits of of what your body mind and spirit feel aligned with knowing when to say no and how to have those boundaries with yourself and the people around you and we need to not lose sight of our own capacity to self-soothe because that's what's really happening there when you're when you're finding and latching on to that person who is indulging you in your in your toxicity (laughs) um we forget how to soothe our own nervous systems and we make we tie that person that dynamic that situation with the ability to feel relaxed and calm. And we 
lose that power within ourselves. We forget that it's there. Now we can tap into it. Isolation begins to feel really uncomfortable in these cases. Or maybe you're at the other end of the spectrum where you're addicted to your isolation. You have a really hard time coming out of your shell. You don't want to interact with other people. You, you want to be by yourself and wallow with yourself. Both of these ends of the spectrum can become very unhealthy very quickly because we need the co-regulation but we also need the self-soothing. So how do we self-soothe? How do we get back to this place? Well, first things first is we need to be really mindful to not judge ourselves. Yes, we're disappointed in ourselves, but we don't dwell on that fact. We talk to ourselves like we would talk to a child. This morning I was sitting in my bedroom and I was just giving my arms a massage because they're really sore. I went to the gym yesterday, which felt really good. Um, but I was just thinking about how we've got these electrical pathways in our bodies and our connective tissue that are the nervous system. And that is how every single function in our body happens through these communication pathways between the brain and the body and the various parts of the body. When the nervous system is dysfunctional, nothing is going to work as it should. I was reminded of the fact that the nervous system is its own separate system slash entity within my body and I can talk to it as though it's external from myself and express my gratitude to my nervous system for everything that it does for me because I literally would not be able to function or do anything without it and neither would you and also talking to myself like I know that I'm making these decisions right now that are not necessarily fueling me but I I'm doing what I'm doing for a reason and let's get to the root cause of that reason. Like, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling a sense of heaviness? Is there a way that I can alleviate it? Or is it something that I should just let myself process and feel? Maybe it's just my circumstances positioning themselves so perfectly in the way that's just telling me to take it easy and, re and rest, relax. Let yourself be free. And if there comes a point where that's no longer working for you, it's time to put on your big girl panties and be a little disciplined about it and force yourself to do things that you don't want to do. Like me sitting down to record this podcast episode today. Clean up my whole workspace. Get my monitors out. Even though I'm in a corner, this listening setup is going to be terrible, but I'm really determined to get back into making my music um, even if it's just for fun like I just want to do it I want to have access to these tools that I've purchased for myself so maybe at this point if you're feeling disappointed in yourself you should use this as an opportunity to dive into a hobby that you were disappointed in yourself for letting go of a long time ago but now there's a chance to bring it back into your life. Accept that things did not work out the way that you were expecting them to. And that is a blessing because who knows what would have happened if, if things had gone your way. Don't see this as your manifestations not coming to fruition because that's not what's happening here. When you are trying to attract something into your life, manifest, visualize, however you wanna approach it, the goal shouldn't be to think about the specific things or like circumstances, events, whatever that you want. Rather to think about what it is that you are wanting to feel. How is it that you are wanting to interact with your community and your loved ones? What does your body feel like? What are the sensations? And a lot of times we can get those results in a variety of different circumstances. It doesn't have to look exactly the way you imagined it for it to still check all the boxes and fit the bill. Think of your body like a house and the nervous system is the electrical system. You can have appliances in the house like a washing machine or dishwasher that work perfectly fine like they're per they're in perfectly good condition but they're not going to turn on unless you have electricity running to the washing machine or the dishwasher. So you're gonna drive yourself crazy trying to get those things to work if you don't have, if you're not paying your power bill. 
You know what I mean? So it's the same with your nervous system and your body. You can't expect yourself to have the energy to go work out and eat, you know, cook a really nice home cooked meal or sit at a desk for eight hours and go do some deep work on a project if you're not powering it with the fuel it needs from your nervous system. And the only way your nervous system is gonna be able to work correctly is if you're giving yourself that healthy balance of self regulation and co regulation. If you are engaging in practices that are balancing instead of really, really sporadic and causing your nervous system to go into overload, such as partying all the time and never sleeping and not eating the right foods. It's, it really is a vicious cycle, but the, the best thing that you can do right now if you're feeling that sense of depression and lethargy, if you don't feel like moving forward, if you're just disappointed in yourself because things just seem to never work out, go sit out in nature. Literally go sit on a porch, go sit on your front doorsteps, just breathe in some fresh air that is so grounding for the nervous system. Get some some morning sun, balance out your circadian rhythms, go to bed at the same time every night. That doesn't mean you have to give up every single bad habit that you have in order to still live overall a really good quality, healthy life. I love the 80-20 rule. You know, 80% of the time you are on it, you're doing what you got to do to stay in shape and feel good, look good, eat good. But then 20% of the time you give yourself a break. And so finding that moderation is very important here. But also don't beat yourself up about it if you overindulge just a little bit because staying stuck in the past and being disappointed in yourself is ultimately doing nothing for how you can resolve and better the situation in the future. And if you're beating yourself up and being hard on yourself, that's just gonna wig out your nervous system and get in the way of those communication pathways that are gonna help your body do the things it needs to do. Anyways, I know this is a little bit of a shorter episode because I've gotta get going to work. So I hope that you enjoyed your grounding beverage, you enjoyed this episode. We're gonna talk about some more stuff in the next couple weeks here. Um, related to seasonal affective disorder and just dealing with mental health challenges in general. But look how cute this mug is, by the way. I got it at Home Goods for Patrick, but of course I'm drinking out of it. Whatever you're going through, you're going to be okay. You're going to get through it. And nothing is permanent. That place that you were in a couple of months ago where you felt so good and so motivated, disciplined, Even if you're not in that place right now, you'll get back to it. Everything comes back around. Everything runs and operates in cycles in the universe. Don't you know? I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. I'm going to go work um, and not be too mopey. I feel good today. I feel good. Productive. So take little baby steps. If you can't get out of bed, literally just sit up and stretch in your bed. And once you stretch in your bed, maybe you'll feel like getting up and going for a walk. And once you go for the walk, maybe you'll feel like drinking some water. And then you can eat some breakfast and take your supplements. And then go sit on the couch and watch an episode of Gilmore Girls or sit on the porch and enjoy nature before you get going into your work for the day. Exciting things coming soon, you guys. I swear it. I swear it. Cross my heart. Uh, And it's also almost Halloween. We love her. Okay. Have a great rest of your day. Share this episode. Like and subscribe. Do all those things. You know the deal. Okay, bye.